So basically, uh, this presentation is about our association because I can only speak from my own experience. I don't know about working bees in Serbia or like in Latvia, for example. So I can only talk what uh, we do. And uh, first, the, the first thing is like the context, you know, where you live. So uh, Jarec is in Jarec, <laughs> in Slovenia between Maribor and Ljubljana. It, uh, the entire municipality has a population of around 25,000 people. There's maybe more now. And uh, the town that we are located, it has 5,000 people. It's like very well developed and so on. We have a lot of industry. We have like the distribution center for Lidl for the entire Balkans. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to solve the problems, you, oh shit, this should be redacted from the video. I will not say what to do, but you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that building is almost as big as our town, so you see. And, and uh, you really want to protect it. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, there was a forest yeah, there. It's and it's now it's just called the forest, but it's a lot of industrial objects. <laughs> and because of this, we have a high standard of living, according to GDP data. <laughs> so it's something. But yeah, uh, I always joke when people come to our town, I always joke it's like a small utopia where we kill the planet very slowly. You know? we, have, we, we recycle, we have electric cars, uh, we have bicycle parts and so on, but it's not enough. <laughs> And also it's quite conservative, a lot of old people are there because young people usually go to universities in Ljubljana or Maribor or something. So it's just me and you, you're also in Ljubljana now. <laughs> me and Dasha. <laughs> <laughs> young people! Yeah. <laughs> also it's like safe and stable, relatively. Uh, and this means that you kind of have to adapt your actions. You know, if you do like uh, direct actions, Violence doesn't work as well as in Athens, for example. When I'm speaking with people from Athens, they say, it's so easy, you just burn a bottle and you throw it and you have riots immediately. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but here, here <laughs> some guy told me, he was like a narco-tourista. He was traveling to various <laughs> countries. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Athens are very famous for Athens. Yeah. <laughs> They're coming in Greece a lot. And anyway, so uh, th therefore the context is important. You have to like, adapt your uh, actions, your activities, what you're going to do. And uh, also, like, we have a lot of agriculture, the worst kind of the ones, so like hops production, you know, monocultures everywhere, a lot of pesticides and so on, it's not great. And uh, industry as well, I also benefit from this industry. Yeah, what can you do? Like, you make some money. <laughs> you invest in some dice, it's better than. And tourism is also getting a lot uh, promoted. And the uh, culture is like, there is culture, but it's not very big, you know. But we try to do this as you well. You have beer fountain. Yeah, we have beer fountain as well. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I will talk about it later. <laughs> so I want to say that there's like, there's a lot of sustainability operations going on, but it's very contradictory because the municipality is very eco economically orientated. So this means that this sustainability is more like, <coughs> kind of like a greenwashing thing. And you, want, and you want to try to change this. So the first thing, when you have like an organization or something, is like your goal. What you're going to do, you know? And you have a very simple goal, just to bring the entire municipality towards zero waste. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But I, I, I kind of like this, like, you know, the smart objectives, specific, measurable, attainable, uh, re uh, realistic, and time. <laughs> because we have none of that. <laughs> we just try to do what we do. And we engage with like various different parts. We, we use this uh, a kind of joke, it's like a so called scattergun approach. <clears throat> Instead of being like a sniper rifle, very precise, you just do everything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So we like, uh, communicate a lot with like, the citizens. So Yona, for example, is our social media manager, and uh, she is responsible for the Instagram page. And uh, then we connect with all the various local stakeholders. I will go in, in details like, a bit later. And we apply pressure to elected officials. I love doing that. I was like, yo, Mr. Mayor, I will come to a meeting. <laughs> Then I have a meeting and then it lasts for like an hour and a half and they just like have no idea what to do because so many ideas were put forth. 
And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, like non-violent direct action, I think it's very appropriate for our context. Maybe if you're like somewhere else, maybe a Kalashnik will help, but <laughs> here it's, you know, but that's, yeah. It's more common than yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> we are not supposed to say that on the camera. Let's be like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. So, be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you're like, it's like, you know, if you're like in Rojava or Chiapas, it's different, you know, it's different. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we're saying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we are aiming to this, like, we do a lot of, like, workshops and stuff, but we are aiming to systematize this in our municipality, to have, like, an actual thing going on that people are, like, not just people, but other businesses as well, organizations, and everything that kind of, like, works in this zero waste. And with a hint of the growth and social ecology. It's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> so, how our organization began? This is us, we had this event called the uh, Open Kitchen, and it was zero waste with ultra-local ingredients. But ultra-local was just potatoes. <laughs> the rest had to buy, but it was part of the season. <laughs> potatoes and onions from my garden and from my neighbor, neighbor's garden, who is on my land, but it's, it's a community garden. <laughs> so uh, we began, like, I began first in 2015 when I returned from my studies. It took me three years to convince the municipality to become a zero-waste municipality. So I was like, you know, that Don Quixote with fighting the battle with the windmills. Yeah. It was ridiculous, like. And then afterwards, uh, the girl on the left, on the, on, yeah, yeah, on the yeah, left, yeah. from perspective, uh, Barbara, she has the zero-waste shops, shop now, where I showed the products the other day. Uh, so it was us two, we began, and Tasha came to our first event, and she started photographing. <laughs> and now she's still photographing. <laughs> <laughs> She's still like very active as well. And uh, afterwards, Yona also joined. So we are like kind of like the core, the core group, us three. Uh -huh. And we have yeah some other guys as well who like come and go. Officially, we have oh yeah, I have to explain this first. So we began completely informally, just like three people together, four people together doing things without money whatsoever. You know? And then, afterwards, uh, a president of the Tourist Association approached me and she said, you're very active, active, you want to be the president? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, to be? the president of the Tourist Association. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was like, no, no, no. And she's like, please, please, please. And she said, okay, yeah, I will do it, I will do it. And now you have money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's different. So now, like, we are like a formal association. I don't know how it's like in your countries, but here we have like a, a tax number, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we, we are not a business, so like it's like an NGO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and it's like 125 year old, this association. Yeah. yeah, but we kind of like completely subverted it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> tourist aso aso ah, association. you took the tourist association in the... Ah. <laughs> 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 Three purpose. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly. like those like, uh, kleptocratic bees. <laughs> <laughs> Use the body on the tourist and actually exactly. yeah, so you, you take what is uh, available there. So this is available. And, <laughs> <laughs> but usually, and you repurpose it. <laughs> yeah, usually it's just like pensioners who are like planting some plants and like making small signs or whatever. And we just went like all in. <laughs> <laughs> So, but uh, because it's a, a, an association, it's like a form of direct democracy. We have something similar to consensus, the decision-making mechanism, but usually it's just like an assembly where people don't really participate much, and I just talk and I'm like a dictator, and they say, you gotta do this and that and that, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone has to vote, and you have to be like, you have to reach the consensus or the enough vote, vote to, be a, to be there. And officially we have 125 members, because the more members you have, the more money you get from the municipality. Mm. But unofficially, you don't have that many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it. So like for coordination and tasks, we have like meetings, not very often, because I think if you have meetings often, it's kind of counterproductive. So we have just like one or two meetings per month, or like one meeting per two months, and we decide what to do, and the rest we coordinate all like a Facebook chat. Or we just call each other, like, yo, we have time, yeah, okay, let's plant some plants. And, uh, yeah, and also we, we, we kind of do this reflection. Was it okay, was it not okay? I don't know. We'll see. So, yeah, this is how we kind of organize 
this is also important for like interactive part for which I doubt you have time. But uh, the, the mentors, you know, like you and you and uh, you and you know what the what people's <laughs> experience here. How your organizations function and how you can uh, advise to like learners, you know, how to do it best. Anyway. So another important thing is the local actors. What are the stakeholders in your community which have like supportive content in a way? So that you don't start from the zero, you already have some people who are like here and you just like kind of like connect with them, you know. But it always usually starts with like friends and family and acquaintances. So like like this people which you don't see that often but they come with certain things. And the uh, municipality, so the official like actor is very important to have. We have one person in the municipality which we work with a lot. But they are always kind of suppressing her because we're giving her too many ideas, you know. <laughs> and it's difficult then to like uh, do it all the time. And there are also like institutions. We have like educational institutions like the Waldorf School and the uh, University for the third living period, basically for pensioners and people who didn't finish high school and they go there and so on. But they have a lot of zero, zero waste projects, also because of us. We kind of like uh, inspired them in, in many ways. Uh, but they're like very uh, official, you know. So when you go there, uh, they have like proper classrooms and everything and like infrastructure to, to do like workshops and stuff like that. So it's, it's very nice. And those, have, those also have a big reach. And uh, yeah, various public institutions which are in the area. We are just like, you know, someone calls us and 90% of the time we're like, yeah, I'm not going to do it, I'm like, going to do it. And uh, so NGOs, for example, we just had like a, a workshop for like high school children, pupils, with the local Rotary, you know, the place where each people gather to be rich together again. They have money, so they kind of like uh, can fund various activities in this way. And for example, umbrella organizations are like uh, in Slovenia we have Ecologists Without Borders, and they run the entire national network for the zero waste municipalities. And they can give you like resources and help, and they can promote your things and so on. So it's also good you know, to connect with like bigger organizations and to know how, how to achieve various things. And like here yeah, in our town we also have like a youth center like here in the Matra. So it's very nice, they're also like super active. So we work with them all the time. Right? And uh, intergenerational as well. Oh there's like a we call this the fruit house, but it's not a fruit house, it's like an <laughs> it's an organization <clears throat> that it's kinda of like uh, connects like old people and young people together. And we have a lot of workshops there, you know, with them as well, like zero based workshops. It's nice. And uh, national and international. So here we are, international organization. We do this as well. And uh, national ones. So yeah, for example, for my zero waste house, I will talk about this at the end. Anyway, I kind of got into architecture and construction now, and now I'm, I'm like online with like the Construction Institute of Slovenia and like the that big publication of like called the Green Slovenia, which is about all the sustainable practices and so on. So now we also work with them somehow, it just happened. <laughs> and yeah, businesses, we made like uh, this list of all the businesses in the area we have, which have a zero waste function. They might not have completely zero waste, but they have this function. So we made this list on our, our website so people can check. Mm -hmm. And the media as well, I learned out recently. So from October till December, I had an interview once per week, every month. It was crazy. And I, I have seen the power of media. Like, so media can really help you a lot. Either it's like local media, or like national media, or international media. They can help you. They can also like put you down, but it's very really useful to have media on your, on your side. So activities, what we do? Our activities, yeah, are like, uh, most like communication through Facebook and Instagram. And we just like, we had this, uh, on Mondays, we have meme Mondays, <laughs> where I, I, I share zero waste memes. It's a lot of engagement, you know, you reach a lot of people this way. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, Daniela is our uh, Instagram uh, manager, <laughs> and uh, she does a lot of stories. She has a nice feeling for aesthetics, and she does like very nice stories as well. And she replies to all the annoying messages. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we do like social events, a lot of it. I will show some pictures after. But we do oof, so many things. Like we have the, the kitchen, we have the plastic jazz, we have the for children, we have, I will show pictures later, stuff like that. And we also engage in public spaces. So <clears throat> just before we arrived here, we planted like bee friendly plants next to the public library. Uh, so it was like a form of direct action. You just went there, the library said, We have money, we're gonna pay you. Okay, cool, let's do it. We just did it like, with a couple of friends. It was quite a lot of fun and a lot of hard work. What did you do? Be, uh, be, oh, be friendly plants. Yeah, be friendly plants. Be, be friendly plants. Like pollinator, friendly plants. Ah, yeah. yeah, so like public space. And uh, yeah, workshops, as I mentioned, we did so many that I can't even remember anymore what we did. Like, everything from like do your own detergent, do your own deodorant. We, we made like tote bags out of like t-shirts. Um, we had uh, we had a picnic. Zero waste. Picnic. <laughs> Zero waste picnic, yeah. And, and we made a raised garden bed out of like old wooden pallets, stuff like that. And then direct actions, which are kind of like connected with this, and the administration, yeah. So if you're an official organization, you know how it is with the receipts and the bills and everything. And this part is like uh, it has to be done. It's not always easy, but it's very manageable if you do it the right way. And because if, if you want to get the funding from the municipality, we need to first have an assembly and to prove that we have an assembly, and also uh, do all the bookkeeping work. You know, we have to send the municipality our balance sheet and stuff like that, so that they know how much money we spend and so on, and that everything is like legal as fuck. <laughs> but there is always, uh, okay, I'll talk about this in finances. And uh, project work. So, right now we're in the middle of a project which is worth 30,000 euros, and it should be happening now, but it's not because we're here. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, we got uh, this money to uh, establish a street collection of used cooking oil. So every household will get a small container and they will pour the oil in here and with this small container they will go to the bigger container on the street and pour the oil in there. And one guy will come and uh, they will pay the municipality 35 cents per each kilogram of oil captured. So you get money from like a waste stream, you know, and then they make candles out of it and stuff like that. And uh, one of the big things was to do is proposals. And uh, yeah, we send this to the municipality and it's just, they never reply usually, of course, because our proposals are like this long and like, just like <laughs> the other day with Dasha and I, the municipality was annoyed by our be friendly uh, bed in front of the library. Just some stupid things, you know. And then Dasha and I were like, okay, what are you gonna do? We're gonna say something back. So we wrote an email like this with five academic articles under the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like studies about pollinators and, and uh, urban spaces are important yeah. for them. And, and like also like sh just like short sentences like of good examples of what it could be done, you know. Mm -hmm. So we kind of show them, yeah, we know what we're talking about and also you, you don't know shit, so listen to us. <laughs> 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 but it was in like a different way. And also like... <laughs> I was also I wrote also like a proposal like 20 pages of like uh, food sovereignty during the lockdown ahead of time. So I wrote this how our municipality could become food sovereign. And of course what happened, I, I thought it's gonna be like a collaborative approach that the municipality will help and then but just like mm, nothing. I didn't even get a reply back. Not even like a thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but in terms of proposals, we do this like a lot and usually there's not much this done because you also need the people behind it to do it. Anyway, activities. So these are our activities. So here uh, on the top right, we had an exchange of house plants. And you also have like an, another organization which you are working with in the past, but you know how it comes to in finding sometimes. They work the off their own thing, but we support them still. They do like seed exchange. And every year we also have like the plant exchange, like small tomatoes, small paprika, small things like that, so people can exchange. 
And uh, there is the goal, we also had like uh, exchange of, uh, of products, of vegetables. So if you have a garden and another person has a garden, you can exchange the vegetables. Surplus. Yeah. And we do this on like this uh, farmer's market in the center of our town. Mm -hmm. And uh, here on the right, we are preparing children for impending apocalypse. <laughs> so, so you know, it, it was like a workshop to how to survive in the forest. And you need, <laughs> 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 and you need, you need to teach the children in a very young age how to survive. <laughs> But it was, it was so much fun. And uh, we connected again with like, a different organization from like uh, Kocevia, which is like a very forested area. And this guy on the picture here, he actually teaches, teaches soldiers, soldiers how to survive in the forest. He's like super <laughs> into it, you know. And those do not forget each other. And to, to, to create this event, this is very important. To create this event, Four, no, five organiza organizations were participating. So it was us, it was the forest guy, it was the fruit house, and they, they, they cooked the meal, and I provided the food for the meal, some from my garden, some from the local farmer, and it was also uh, the tourist association of Shepete, which runs that place, which is a protected area. So it, no, no, we have to look for these synergies with institutions which are close to yeah. That's the word. Yeah. 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 And here on the bottom right, I was in another Erasmus in Brussels last year. It was like organized by Zero West Europe, so it was also like international connections. And it was so funny, like, everyone was like, yeah, I'm like from uh, Zero West Ukraine, I'm from like Zero West France, I'm from Zero West England, and they were all like big organizations. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I'm from Zero West Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, good to connect people together in various forms. And on the bottom right, oh, I'm very proud of this event, it's the so-called Plastic Jazz. It was my idea, and then again, I initiated this movement, not movement, I found an organization which does this yearly jazz festival, and they found the musicians, and uh, we found a graphic designer and a video producer, and it was like an audiovisual communication. So, the music started with like, you know, like jazz from the 50s, and the video as well was like at the beginning of the plastic production. Mm -hmm. So, how the plastic began, and then we came into the present time. It, and it was like, really like, on the video, it was like, you know, just like plastic pollution and so on, and the music was like really eerie and scary, and we were like, oh no, I want to die now. <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, we also had the future of plastics, and it was like this like solar punk aesthetics, mm -hmm. and like very experimental music like upbeat and optimistic, it was like radical optimism. You know? <laughs> so we can solve this problem. You know? So the people didn't go and buy a rope to hang themselves, but they went home and have a good time. <laughs> but it was a really nice project, and we were also featuring on like national television, and we were also featuring a lot of time on a different national television, and uh, we have our short YouTube trailer now. <laughs> And yeah, we were like, we had three plays, and we, but there's no time to do more. Huh? But it was a very nice project. Anyway, finances. Why it doesn't grow in trees, eh? <laughs> it does sometimes. <laughs> so uh, here is Dasha. She was showing how to prune the trees correctly. And this is my color right there. So I use, I use my uh, own place as like a commons, in a way, mm -hmm. to have, you know, to host various workshops and stuff like that. And uh, so we are mostly financed by the municipality. We get around 2,000 euros per year, which is uh, <laughs> another source of funding is membership. So uh, every member pays 10, 10 euros per year to be a member, to be a good club, you know. How much finance did you say from the municipality? Uh, around 2,000 euros per year. And to do that, you need to fill up a form. You fill up a form and yeah, no, it's, it's an easy form. Yeah, but you have to say exactly what are you going to spend yeah, the yeah, money yeah. on. So yeah, you yeah. have to have a plan for the, for for the future. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, you need to budget the activities. You have to plan the entire year in, in advance, so it's quite difficult. Like. But uh, <laughs> you also get money from like the, the projects. Andre, yeah. did you like write the plea for the money and sign application <laughs> and then you received that? Yeah. And then you, <laughs> you said, yes, I will give you <laughs> 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 And the project money. So 
in our area we have these so-called local action groups. And every two years there is like around 400,000 euros for this. 400,000? Yeah, like almost, almost half a million. And it's distributed. So I wrote a proposal which was like 135 pages long. And I worked, Holy. <laughs> and I worked together with the university, the local university and uh, the municipality. So it was like three partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got this money now for this project for the like, collection of the used food environment. Yes, so. Please explain this because we didn't actually get the money. Oh yeah, we didn't get the money yet, but we got, we're gonna get it. So basically, it's, it works in the way that you have to invest your own money first in, and then get eighty percent of the costs yeah. are returned uh, to you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Not all, not hundred percent. But I have, I have ways to use this money wisely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a camera, so we not talk. <laughs> <laughs> also, we have this so-called uh, black fund. <laughs> <laughs> So we, 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 we kind of like uh, connect, uh, collect donations when we have our workshops and activities. Okay. And we say like, yeah, yeah, if you feel good, please give us 10 euros or like more, or like less, whatever you want. We have the space you want, you know. And for that, uh, for that open kitchen event, the zero waste kitchen where you're serving people outside, we made like minus 300 euros this <laughs> way. And for the plastic jazz, we made like minus 2,000. <laughs> So we didn't make money. No, yeah, we didn't make money. But we had money to spend before. And we had more. <laughs> and I was the producer of the plastic jar, so I, 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 from my own pocket, I gave like 1,000 euros. But it's okay. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. But, you know, because we're like this association, we have money to be spent, not to make money. So it's okay. And yeah, and this is what, what we always say. Even if you had money, it wouldn't be enough because we have so many ideas what to do. You know, we need to change the entire system. For this, with a trillion or a two. You know. <laughs> and, yeah. So yeah, we also did some things, and uh, we are very happy when we have like events which are well attended. Like sometimes, you know, from defeat to defeat until the final victory. Like one time we had an event which another member of the group and I prepared like a lot. And uh, about, it was about e-waste, and two people came. One of them was, was Dasha, the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had like an, an, an event with like the Institute for Independence. It's like a, a media house, and 350 people watched it online. You know, so it varies a lot. Like it depends who you are working with and what you are doing. So we also got like recognition. You know, I got okay. Just to explain this picture. This is the European Commissioner uh, Elisa Ferreira. She is for the cohesion or something, and this was the so-called New European Bauhaus movement. It tries to create like sustainable and inclusive and aesthetic community communities. Unlike other European projects, it's like actually very similar to what we are talking about here. It's surprising. And they have like a small budget of 85 million euros, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's very, it's, it's like Ursula von der Leyen, she had a like big speech and she said, the new European Bauhaus is the soul and the heart of the European Green Deal. I was like, okay, that sounds good. And especially because I want it, it's a feeling of And uh, I was there, I didn't expect it at all to be it for my project of the Zero Waste House. And I was there and they called my name to go on the stage and I didn't have a speech or nothing prepared, so I was just like, I basically told everyone to shut the fuck up and listen and think about themselves. <laughs> I can show you the video later, they actually put my speech in the promo video later. <laughs> it was like, it was like I, I just demanded a few seconds of silence for all the human and non-human lives lost now and in the future of climate change. Yeah. And people were just like, fuck. <laughs> and then I talk a bit more. Yeah, but this, I mean, this number propelled our, our group so much, like oh, we were in the media all the time, and just like, explaining what we, what we are doing and so on. And it gave us a good platform to talk about the zero waste, the circular economy, and also about the growth and social ecology, but with a hint, you know, not the scare people too much. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like regular people reading things. And uh, yeah, so also with this project about oil, we hope to systematize another waste stream into the community. 
and uh, also a lot of schools, I mean that uh, Waldorf school and uh, the house, mm -hmm. the house, they're also very into zero waste now because it's Sorry, what is the place for food house? Food house. Fisha Sadeja Druja. It's like an association for inter intergenerational <laughs> learning. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Mm. yeah. So yeah, we have some proposals in the months which were successful. So we have like these small victories, and it's good because people are actually talking about it, about zero waste now in our community. It's not much, you know, it's not much. There, there, there should be so much more, but at least people are talking about it because of what we are doing, and it also gives new new perspective in decision making. Now, you know, when you have to fill up these forums for the to get the money from the municipality, now there is a section. What are you doing on zero waste? So you have like you, you get 25 euros if you do zero waste activities. Wow. <laughs> it's not much, but it's something. It's something yeah. you have to about that. And the mayor is always talking about how we separate waste and how we do that, how we do this. It's very symbolic, but it's not much action behind it. But it's getting there because it's really very annoying, you know, like a fly all, all the time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this is what we do. So, uh, for the actual exercise, which we are hungry, let's submit it. We can do this like later as well. I was thinking, oh yeah, oh yeah, a bit of shameless promotion. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow us. So like, just type in zero wage audits into any media, and you will find us. Anyway, so uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do, share the experience. Oh, sorry. No. Share the experiences of yourselves, what you are doing, and then like to mentor each other. How you how are you overcoming this problem in the local context, or how you organized, or how you overcoming the problem of finances and so on. But uh, this we can do this like any time, you know. But we are all, all already doing this now when we were talking over yeah. the bears and so on. So I would propose that we conclude here and go for the lunch. Uh, do, uh, do this influence on your private, uh, family, personal life? Because I see that all of you, uh, you have to give your own money, your own space, your uh, your own like private life. Do. I don't know uh, what, for example, maybe it's a too, too personal question, but how you deal with it, I mean... How do I do it? Do deal with it, I mean, uh, this it, all... Uh, for me it's like a therapy, you know, if I wouldn't do it, I'd be, I'd be the best as fuck, like. <laughs> so, uh, I do this, I have like two jobs, basically, this one and the actual one, which is one. <laughs> so, but, I just do it, and in terms of personal life, yeah, I mean, it's hard, but it's not that hard. It's manageable. I'm just like always on the edge of burnout, but mm -hmm. it works. <laughs> <laughs> but it works when you get like, when you meet new people and so on. You get to use it. Yeah. So you have a full-time job? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but not from this, huh? My full-time job to be this, but it's not, so. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a machine. He's mm. <laughs> and how many people you said that you have four? Those are you, but uh, that that is you. But uh, what about volunteers? Do you have support? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why we also work with other organizations who have like a more they they are paid to do this. For example, the, the youth center. Mm -hmm. And then we also like just for people. For example, when we have the open kitchen, we put for like eighty people, and people just you know come. And also come because our volunteers kind of like help spread the word over and so on. So yeah. Uh, what are the next goals, projects? First thing is to oh yeah, like today I organized the forest holidays again. So we gotta have that in July, and uh, we have to finish this. God, God for the project of the used olive, used oil collection. We have to do this now. And for the rest, I really want to uh, open a tool library. 
Yeah. 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 So I want also have like workshops you know, to do like retroactive material passports of the buildings and uh, for people to come and help with the attached aquaponic greenhouse, like a passive greenhouse. And I hope, I want it to be made from round earth, but Christos was saying it's out of work, so we need a lot of volunteers, you know. So it's going to be another part of our activities. So okay. kind of like the personal, the personal economy and sphere mixes a lot, like in my work. I don't know if it's uh, too um, much of a personal question, but like, did you, for example, with the zero waste house, like you're renovating your house, uh, did you study that in, like at night when you couldn't sleep, or like you studied that in university? Like, uh, did um, your um, studying? Uh, no, I was studying something completely else. I was studying international retail marketing. Okay, so it's completely okay. <laughs> yeah, it's completely different, and I'm just like a very curious person, you know. So that idea of the zero waste house was based on ten years of research. And, and then my cousin and I, she's an architect, and I told her how to do it, how to, because I can draw, you know. And she like drew the images, and I kind of just like connected all the dots together, the things. But yeah, I do like uh, research all the time, like, <coughs> I'm half crazy already. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, any more questions? Yeah, what, what would be like, um the first suggestion that you would say to somebody that would start an association like this, what is the most important thing for you? Like, what does a suggestion that you would have given yourself when you started this? That's, that's a very good question. <laughs> Don't give up. Yeah. It's gonna be hard. Oh, I had like I had this idea in my thought, but uh, the first thing to do is to find support from the people who are near to you, and then. It kind of like snowballs out of it, you know. And once you start doing it, you just have to keep keep doing it. And then through the work process, you will find many new findings, new things. And then you will just meet like random people who have various organizations which you can connect together. But the most important thing is to just keep doing and learning from experiences. And only like actual work will show you, and actual experiences will show you how it's done. And uh, yeah. I mean, don't give up. I mean, it's yeah. Don't give up. Then, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Alexander already mentioned. I think that uh, if you get somehow uh, in the media, that the media starts talking about your projects, then you are like boom. You know, it's a uh, it's a really game changer. You know, <coughs> and also uh, social network uh, presence. You know being active on that uh, so that you get, uh, I mean, I hate it, uh, but you have to, the, the goal is to have much, as, as much as possible followers, uh, engagement on the, so that really creates also a difference in terms of uh, everything, you know, just being present yeah. uh, in the media and in the online life. Yeah. Like for example, we started with the most simple thing, which is to have a lecture about the basics of the zero waste. And then, People came and gave us ideas, and we continue doing lectures every month. And then you like, maybe we need a more hands-on approach, and we started doing workshops. You know how to create a laundry detergent and so on, yeah. and how to create uh, candles out of used cooking oil and so on. And then just kind of like, no, it's really hard to put this in words, but things kind of just come together in a way. 